Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and this is part two of who knows how many parts of uh, motorizing the little grizzly sp spindle so we can have power feed. I, uh, I think it may take a while. There's a lot of problems to work out, a lot of things I've got to learn. I had gotten pretty good with the, with the Arduino syntax, you know, a couple of years ago when I got the stepper motor, but then I forgot everything I learned. And I've got uh, a new device with it. I've got an LCD screen, which is made by another company besides uh, the Arduino company, and I've got to learn their syntax and, and work out what will work and what won't, you know. Uh, it's not like I never made uh, an HMI before, which is computer talk for human machine interface. At the Evil Polluting Refinery, I built the very first touchscreen interface control, and I put in the first uh, controls with running over Ethernet. Now it really did me any good in the money department, but it made me feel good, you know. Well, like you saw in part two, we're going to keep on trying to attach this stepper motor. We're going to keep on trying to set up that Arduino so I can have a touch screen control of the stepper motor. And we're going to make a lot of mistakes. Mr. Bozo has been hanging around the garage all the time, so you never know what he's going to do next. And, you know, I don't know how to stop him because he just, he sneaks in. <laughs> all right, so uh, well, let's get on with part two. All right, so I got me. A, I got it started just by turning the chuck until the chuck started slipping, and then I got me a real tap handle to go ahead and finish it with, and it. I think it's doing all right. It's cutting anyway. And I know probably I should have made just a, a slick hole with no threads at the top and just threaded the very bottom part, but I don't think it really matters. And I may wish I'd used a smaller set screw. I know I'm going to have to use a smaller set screw probably on the, the little gear. I'm not certain. The only good thing is I can print out another gear a couple of hours, you know, while I'm doing other things. All right, let me move over a little bit. I had a set screw laying here. But I don't know. No, I did. So I'll have to go get one. Y'all take a little nap. You can see that it kind of caused a little melting in the in the middle of that tooth right there. And I was doing it on about 200 RPM and a little there. So I'll probably have to clean that up with a pocket knife or something. And maybe that'll still be strong enough for tooth. We'll find out, won't we? All right, let's see if this guy will screw in. Being plastic, I could cross thread the heck out of it and wouldn't know it. At least that's my opinion of it. I, I could be wrong again. I don't know where I'm holding this thing so you guys can see it or not. Kind of hard to do. Everything's backwards in the camera. Oh, there we are. It's through to the middle. So, and I used as long of a set screw as I had, so I think it may work out. Now we got to work on the on the little gear. That's going to be nerve wracking. The small gear cracked when I threaded it, so I was off center anyway. So I guess. I can print another one and give it another try and maybe 
I don't know. We'll see from there where we go. Maybe I was just too rough on it. I can't say. So that I don't head, you know, head into this job totally clueless, I thought, well, it's time for a sanity check to see if I'm going to have clearance back here for the motor if I use gears. All right, so set this up here, and no, that's not going to work. Even to the, no matter what kind of imagination you've got there, that's not going to work. There's tons of distance between the gear and the, uh, between the two gears. So I've wasted time in my time and, and uh, other people's time even starting out on these gears. And of course this one on the motor, too small to be done with plastic because it, it split when I tried to uh, thread it. But this, uh, <laughs> obviously I'm gonna have to do this with pulleys. So it's back to the drawing board, get the right pulleys to go on here, and then we'll just start it over from there. Uh, got a lot of stuff to do on this project before I get anywhere. I've got a lot of stuff to learn. I've got to figure out how to connect the uh, LCD screen properly to the Arduino and then read input buttons from the screen. And then I need a control program allow me to go up and down and stop and change the speed so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm all week just doing the control program alright so it's back to the drawing board right now if I was going to use that gear it needs to slide back another inch and a half so you can see that that's the maximum diameter that I could use and the fact of the matter is that I guess I could put the motor out here facing in but I don't really like that idea it's out here getting in my way then so we're going to switch to using pulleys and belts that's the way all the CNC guys do it anyway well as you can tell a lack of planning can cause definitely cause a great deal of uh, wasted effort which is on my part and others too and I've discovered that I don't have the clearance to put the gears on there in the first place so I'll have to go on with a different approach but while I was in the midst of that I got this box and it came from uh, one of my viewers Mr. James Deadman and it's got these oil containers you know the spill proof cans I guess you could call them si sippy cups for machinists you know and he sent me not one but two, I guess I can have threading oil in one and, and just regular oil in the other or whatever. Or regular oil in both or threading oil in both, whatever. Anyway, he has his own YouTube channel and it's called, well, James Deadman. Which is, uh, I'll try to remember to put his name on the screen so you can see how to spell it. And I certainly appreciate the the oil cups I've thought of several times about making some of those and then I, I didn't but something else I've been working on besides besides printing 3d gears that are not going to get used I've been working on the Arduino and the display so let's crank it up here here's the display and I'm experimenting around with with uh, touch screen stuff which is why I've got this particular expensive display if, if I I've set it to know that when I touch the black that that's a change of state so if I run my finger across the black you'll get a little signal out here and I, of course I ran my finger up that stripe of colors so that it would stop but you can see it you came through the loop saw my finger touching the black and then it saw my finger wasn't touching the black anymore and it stopped writing hello uh, that's alright but there's a great deal of learning I've got to do yet to put bitmaps on the screen apparently 
they need a little pre-processing before this thing can accept them and there's a lot of syntax to learn on this uh, this is an eater fruit guy here it's a the, their large 3.5 inch or something color display what I want to make is color little push button icons on there so I can touch screen start the machine running touch screen stop it speed it up slow it down and I know this is going to take me a while that's why this video is going to be uh, one of several and I'll probably number them after I get finished but I'm going to go ahead and publish them it'll, it'll probably be weeks <laughs> but anyway that's as far along as I got right now I can tell you something if you're ever messing with an Arduino these are called DuPont uh, connections or wires or whatever get that it beats the heck out of any other way you could do to connect things to the Arduino and uh, they're color coded too of course and these little strips you know that came these came with the uh, these strips right here came with the touch screen and I just cut them to match so I could stick them down into a uh, breadboard and then I could solder them on to this guy here which is they're the you know you can see where they're connected to the wires there that's a much easier way of soldering it stick it out you know in a breadboard and then solder the little booger all the way across everything stays lined up and nothing wants to fall out you know when you get these things hot they can fall right through the plastic or whatever so having got this far along and knowing that I've got to get a belt I'm going to order pulleys and such to fit the belt and I'll work on this in the meantime and who knows maybe I'll be back in a week or two weeks or whatever with more progress then I could be back in a matter of days and considering that this this uh, video has probably been demonetized because of my little rant at the beginning I can tell you this I went out to the range the other day with my silencer my homemade silencer and put it on a really nice bull barrel bolt action rifle and it it affected the point of the aim at 50 yards about two inches so I would say that it works just fine it was almost exactly as silent as uh, it was silent it was quiet as the factory job of course you know silencers aren't really movie star they don't go whew, whew, whew. like in the movies they go bang 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 just not as as much over 100 decibels as as, uh, as before they can even get down below 100 decibels you know but it's still not whisper quite that's a Hollywood misleading thing all right let's go see what Bubba's doing and I'll get to working on the rest of this project uh, this this here big city lawyer went down the country there where Bubba and his family live and got up there by the uncle uh, uncle Bug, Bubba Joe's farm he saw a duck coming over and he got a shotgun and boom shot that duck and, you know come right down so he's climbing over the fence to go and get that duck and Uncle Bubba Joe comes riding up on his tractor and stops and he says hey said the fella says yeah what are you doing lawyer says I shot this here duck and I'm gonna go get him you know and uh, <laughs> it, Bubba, Bubba Joe says uh, hey he says uh, that's my duck it fell on my land farmer says I uh, the, <laughs> the lawyer says I shot that duck and I'm gonna get him he says if you if you try to stop me from getting my duck he says I'm a high-powered lawyer and he says I'll sue you for everything you got <clears throat> so Uncle Bubba Joe says, well, he says, I tell you what, you're not used to how they do things down here. He says, let me tell you how we settle disputes down here. Lawyer says, all right, how's that? He says, we do it with a three-kick rule. Lawyer says, what's that mean? And Uncle Bubba Joe says, well, he says, we each kick the other three times, taking turns kicking the other three times, and if the first guy to give up, you know, he's the loser. Lawyer thought, well, this old geezer here, <laughs> He can't kick much, and I'll take him out pretty quick. So he's all right. I said, well, I'll do that. And Uncle Uncle Bub Joe says, now since this here is my farm, he says I get to go first. So he walks up to that lawyer and kicks him right in the between the legs, jewels there, and the lawyer just doubles down on the ground, you know, about to puke. 
then he hauls off and he kicks him right in the side, and then he walks around and he kicks him in the backside real hard. And the lawyer, all he can do is all he can do just stand back up from there. And he gets up and he says, well, he says, it's my turn. Uncle Bubba Joe says, well, he says, I'll tell you what, I give up. You can have the duck. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.